Hi, how you doing? Um, my name is Tom Fosno. We're here at uh, Roca Kitchen and Bar, located at 500 Harrison Avenue in the South End. So to start with, we're going to start by cooking our beets. Um, I, you wanna, I like to use gold beets here because they will not bleed into the gnocchi. Um, you could use red beets, which might make an interesting color as well, but um, I think gold beets also have a nice mild flavor, um, and I think for color-wise, they don't uh, bleed so much into the dish. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can roast, but I like to put them in, um, in a little bit of water because I think they get a little bit more flavor. Um, so we'll start with a couple of beets in the pot. Um, take an orange, just cut it right in half. Sometimes in a quarter, they're this big. It's a big one. Put that into the pot. Take a lemon. Cut that in half. Toss in the pot. Some bay leaf. A little bit of uh, ground fennel. Just a few pinches. You can also use whole fennel seed. Water. So you can see the water should nicely cover the beets. Um, because it's, they're going to take a little while to cook. They probably take at least, you know, an hour uh, to cook. Salt. A few twists of black pepper. And uh, put that on the stove. You always want to start with cold water when you're using uh, uh, root vegetables so that they cook evenly. If you put hot water in, the outsides will cook before the insides. So, so while our beets are cooking, uh, we're now going to roll our gnocchi. There's a lot of different ways to make gnocchi. My favorite way, though, is to keep it really simple. Just I use eggs, flour, but to cook potato, and salt. Um, some people add fold ricotta in, which adds a nice, little bit of nice different flavor. Uh, but I really like to keep it simple. Um, so we have our dough here. Gnocchi dough should not be should be pretty soft, as you can see. Like it shouldn't be if it shouldn't be elastic like a bread dough, because if it is, that means it's had too much flour and it's overworked. It should be probably the texture of um, a little bit more elastic, my feeling is, than mashed potatoes. Um, you, want them, you want it to be able to form it like a dough, but it, but it should break apart. It shouldn't stretch. So, and you're also going to need to add a little bit more flour, too. So the most important thing about gnocchi is to make sure you have the proper amount of flour. Too little, and the gnocchis will fall apart. Too much, and they'll be like um, rubber balls, essentially. So you fold it in, add a little bit of flour. You cut it now. You do, there's a lot of different ways you can shape it any way you want, but really the traditional manner is to put it into little dumplings and fork them to give them um, some ridges. So you roll it into a little a line like this. We cut them. And then what we'll do is you roll them like this. Put them on the edge of a fork. So you get some nice ridges. And like that little bit of a bend over. So it sort of looks like a shell. All right, so we have our, uh, our uh, gnocchi rolled out. So the next stage is to cut the beets. So we have our beets cooked here. We've peeled it off. You don't want the beets too soft. Um, they, should have a, not, uh, they shouldn't be crunchy, but if they're too soft, they won't hold their shape. So you want to be able to get a nice small dice. So to cut off the ends, you can use those, um, you know, or you can square them off. Hold, not, try not to avoid like the curved pieces. And then do a nice small dice here. The beets will have a nice uh, uh, herbal flavor from the bay leaf and the fennel. And at the same time, they'll have a nice, uh, almost a sweet citrusy flavor from the orange and the lemon. And that will help balance out the flavor of the, uh, the gorgonzola. So we have our beets diced here. We'll put these scraps off to the side. Put those in our dish. Next stage is to cut our chives. 
So you have some nice, beautiful chives here. Cutting chives in a restaurant is always like a big test. So you do the best you can. You want chives to be uh, almost clipped. You do not want to bruise them because the flavor will change. So you want them as fine as possible and not bruised. So you need to have a very sharp knife when you're cutting chives. So then we'll put these off to the side. All right, our next part, final part of the dish is to uh, make the pea puree. And the, I try to keep it very simple, some frozen peas. Uh, if, you have, if it's in season, get some English, uh, fresh English peas and shuck them. Um, some toasted pine uh, pistachios and a little bit of olive oil. And in the blender with some, a little bit of salt and pepper, real simple. Um, the proportions you use can really depend on your taste. I think just a little bit of pistachios and peas um, the pistachios add a little bit of creaminess, add a little bit of flavor, um, so the sauce has some body. Um, and this is what you'll get in the end. So our, final, our next step now is to cook the gnocchi. Okay, so for cooking our gnocchi, you want to have a nice, some salted boiling water. The water should be about the flavor of the sea, um, which is what you're usually looking for when you, do, um, when you want to do cook pasta or gnocchi or anything of that nature. So we have two, pan, two pots here. We have one for cooking the gnocchi and one for really combining the dish. We have a little pan that has some of the cooking liquid. We're going to add our gnocchi to it. It's really important when you're cooking gnocchi that the water does not stop boiling. Notice the water continues to boil even after you add the gnocchi. If you add uh, so much gnocchi that the water stops boiling, the gnocchi will become slimy and they won't uh, really hold their shape. So while the gnocchi is cooking, we're going to add a little bit of the beets to this other pan here. And we're going to get this heating up. What we're going to use here is, uh, is a little bit to toss the um, beets with. Adding to our beets now, we're going to add a little bit of butter. And then we're going to check on our gnocchi. If they're starting to float, that's a good sign. You want them to be floating. You can also always feel them too. It should feel slightly firm, uh, the gnocchi should. But mostly the best sign is when they start to float. If they st and these are, as you can see, our beets are starting, our, excuse me, our gnocchi are starting to float a little bit. So then we're going to add them to our beets. Use a little hand strainer. It's always good to hold on to, I like to use a hand strainer because you want to hold on to some of that cooking liquid because you may need it to help thin out the sauce here, the dish here. So a little bit of those beets and the gnocchi. Now we're going to add our chives. And then our gorgonzola cheese at the last second. It's going to be about your, the taste amount. Gorgon's old cheese will start to melt a little bit. You want some of it to hold their shape together. So it should have a nice cream. You can see it's a nice little creamy, te uh, creamy sauce. All right, so now we have our sauce warmed up. Let's put a little bit in the center of the plate. A certain amount of it depends on what your tastes are, but uh, a little bit goes a long way. And then we're going to add our gnocchi, beet, and gorgonzola mixture. And you just put a little bit on there. If it seems a little thick, you can always add a little bit of water. A little bit more of the pasta liquid. That's always, always good to hold on to the pasta cooking liquid. And there we have our uh, potato gnocchi with golden beets, gorgonzola, and pistachio pea puree.